Welcome to Movie Galaxy. The movie begins with oceanographer Tom and his family, his wife Julia and their two kids, Cassie and Ben. They are on a yacht trip in the Caribbean Sea, and while Tom and Ben are busy fishing and Cassie is focused on her gadget, Julia decides to go for a swim. Suddenly, she feels uneasy. She looks around, but the sea seems calm and normal. Still, she has a strong feeling that something big and dangerous is nearby. At the same time, the instruments on the yacht start acting strange, but Tom is too focused on fishing to notice. Julia starts feeling worse and eventually begins to drown. She screams for help, but no one in the family hears her. The water seems to pull her farther from the yacht. As things get serious, Tom finally hears her cries. He quickly steers the yacht toward her. Tom jumps into the water, and with the kids' help, they pull Julia back onto the yacht and revive her. Tom is upset because he always asks swimmers to let others know when they're going into the water. Julia says sorry, and everyone soon forgets about it. The family is happy today because it's their son Ben's 13th birthday. Tom lights the candles on the cake, and everyone congratulates Ben, who gets gifts. Cassie takes a group photo of the happy family. Just then, Cassie's boyfriend calls and asks her about the swim, but suddenly a big storm starts. Cassie gets worried, but her boyfriend says he's okay before the call cuts off. Cassie tells her parents about the storm on land, and then everyone feels the yacht shaking. They rush to the deck and see huge dead whales floating around the boat. Tom says whales can get confused during storms, but these whales are pushing the yacht, making it dangerous. Tom jumps into the water, but soon comes back aboard hurt. Tom says he cut himself on the propeller while trying to figure out what's going on. Julia stitches up the cut on his shoulder, and Tom explains that the yacht's shafts are likely bent from a whale's tail strike, making it hard for them to sail away. Later, Cassie tries to get a signal, but there's none, and the radio isn't working either. Tom starts checking their supplies and finds out they only have enough water for about four days. He reassures the family that they're on a shipping route, so someone should find them soon. But strange noises come from outside and when the family steps onto the deck, they see glowing objects falling from the sky. The objects keep getting closer, and Tom decides to take a chance. He starts the engine and manages to steer the yacht away from one of the falling objects, but the engine gets damaged. The next object falls so close that the family can see they are actually artificial satellites from Earth. A strong wind begins to blow, and the yacht's instruments go out of control. The terrified family hides inside as the yacht is tossed around by huge waves. They put on life jackets and brace themselves for the worst. Suddenly, a strange ringing sound fills the air, causing nosebleeds and nausea. Tom tries to signal for help with a flare gun, but it doesn't work. The family barely survives the night. The following morning, they are relieved to be alive but discover a large hole in the side of the yacht. Mysteriously, the yacht is still afloat. When they step outside, they are shocked to find that the water is completely gone. Their boat is now stranded on a rocky outcrop in the middle of a barren desert where the ocean used to be. Later, Tom tries to calm his family, saying that not everyone could have died. He takes some measurements and realizes that the compass is wrong. North isn't where it should be. This means the Earth's poles have shifted. Such events have happened before in Earth's history, but not in modern times. It becomes clear that the sea has moved to where the land used to be, and it's likely that most of humanity has perished. Cassie can't handle the shocking news and runs to the cabin, asking to be left alone. Julia starts checking their remaining supplies while Ben releases a bunch of colorful balloons into the sky, hoping someone will see them and come to their rescue. Meanwhile, Tom turns on the radio and sends out distress signals. Surprisingly, he gets a response. It's from Nato, the captain of a small submersible. Nato explains that they were deep underwater when the disaster happened, which is why they survived. However, all communication systems are down and waiting for help is pointless. According to NATO's calculations, the sea will return in about a week, and when it does, it will be violent. He advises the family to find higher ground and stay there. Julia immediately tells the children to pack their things. Tom, desperate, asks NATO if he can save their children. NATO explains that his submersible is very small, and sadly, his partner died. He can only take one person. After some convincing, Tom persuades NATO to take both children and Nato provides his location. Tom plots a course on the map and promises his family they'll reach Nato's location in a couple of days. The next morning, as the family is nearly ready to begin their journey, Tom steps onto the deck and spots a man with a dog approaching. He walks toward the man and greets him, but notices that the man is injured. Offering him water, the man drinks, but suddenly punches Tom in the face. Julia sees the attack and rushes to help, 
but the man stabs Tom in the chest with a makeshift spear. The dog keeps Julia at bay as she stands frozen in horror, realizing there is no saving her husband. She runs back to the yacht, but the man chases after her, wounding her arm. Despite her injury, Julia manages to climb onto the deck. The children, hearing her screams, rush to her aid, and together they barricade the cabin doors. After securing the door, Julia hides Cassie and Ben in a locker, handing Cassie the flare gun. She instructs her daughter to use it only as a last resort. Meanwhile, the intruder tries to break down the door and eventually succeeds. Julia hides in the back bathroom, quickly patching up her wound. Once inside, the intruder heads straight to the galley, grabbing some food. It's clear he's starving. Holding a can of food, the man starts searching the yacht. Julia arms herself with a kitchen knife and quietly jumps overboard, hiding beneath the yacht. The intruder peers through the hole in the yacht, but doesn't spot her. However, the dog attacks Julia, and she's forced to kill it. The man hears the dog's yelp, goes outside, and finds its body. Meanwhile, Julia sneaks back onto the yacht through a porthole on the opposite side, but she falls right into the killer's hands. He beats her, throws her onto a couch, and grabs her throat, trying to strangle her. Cassie, seeing all this, knows it's time for the last resort. She opens the locker and fires the flare gun at the man. The shot throws him to the side, but the flare ignites the yacht, setting it on fire. Julia immediately orders her children to escape while she sneaks into the galley. The killer, though injured, tries to attack again. Julia kicks him away, grabs their packed bags, and jumps overboard. Ben finds his father's body, and Cassie runs to it, sobbing. Julia kisses her deceased husband goodbye, but when she sees the killer leaping from the burning yacht, she quickly takes the children and flees. Moments later, the boat explodes behind them. The family runs across the stony desert and eventually takes shelter in a rocky canyon where a stream flows, but the water is salty and undrinkable. Cassie shares a small amount of water with Ben, but he refuses to drink, feeling guilty. He believes the killer came because of the balloons he released. Cassie mentions this too, but Julia firmly tells her to stop and defends her son, explaining that he didn't mean any harm. She urges them to pull themselves together for the long journey ahead. Just then, Julia spots the killer again, still relentlessly following their trail. The family hurries onward. That evening, Ben discovers the carcass of a hammerhead shark and attempts to butcher it for food, but Julia sees the pursuer in the distance and orders the children to run. They soon stumble upon a field filled with toxic waste barrels, left behind by the once flooded sea. Despite the danger of contamination, Julia pushes the children to keep moving, knowing the killer is still right behind them. The family trudges along the former ocean floor, weaving through piles of plastic and trash dumped by humans over the years. Soon, Julia notices that Ben is severely dehydrated, so she gives him the last few drops of water. Cassie, overwhelmed, has a breakdown, convinced they have no hope of surviving. But Julia, determined, commands them to keep moving. Eventually, they come across the fuselage of an old plane that crashed into the sea long ago. They crawl inside to rest. As they settle in, Julia pulls out the last family photo they have and shares the story of how she first met Tom. It was at the hospital where she worked. Tom had been brought in with decompression sickness after a failed dive. The children weep, mourning their father and saying their final goodbyes to him. Later that night, Cassie is awakened by a noise and steps outside to sit near the plane. Out of the darkness, the killer approaches, unaware that Cassie is acting as bait. As he prepares to grab her, Julia ambushes him from the shadows, stabbing him with a knife. The following morning, the family prepares to continue their journey, only to discover that the killer's body has been scavenged, a clear sign that something even more dangerous than humans roams the desert. With a sense of urgency, they press on. Julia checks the map, but suddenly, Ben rushes ahead, desperate. His mother yells for him to stop, but the boy sprints to a salty puddle and drinks a few gulps before Julia pulls him away. Almost immediately, Ben becomes sick. They come across some plastic chairs and build a makeshift shelter from the scorching sun, resting inside. As they try to recover, Julia hears strange sounds from outside. She steps out to investigate and sees something alarming, forcing her to quickly wake the children. Realizing the new danger, they begin running. Soon, they spot a large ship in the distance, surrounded by scattered crashed containers and a few wandering people. Julia calls out to them for help, but the people, panicked, see something far more terrifying. Thousands of giant crabs approaching. They dash into a nearby container and lock the doors, ignoring Julia's desperate pleas for help. 
The family scrambles onto a container, but not before the crabs manage to wound Julia in the leg. As they sit on top of the container, they watch helplessly as the crabs penetrate through a crack in the doors, killing the people inside despite their frantic efforts to defend themselves. Horrified, Julia ties a scarf around her injured leg, but the pain and exhaustion finally overwhelm her, and she passes out. The next morning, Julia wakes up alone, terrified, and calls out for her children. To her relief, she realizes the crabs have moved on, and the kids have gone down to search for food and weapons. Julia quickly cauterizes her wound while Ben examines the weapons they found, sifting through the containers. They manage to find a small amount of food and water in the pocket of one of the deceased. While searching, Julia discovers a radio and contacts Nato. He responds, explaining that he was also attacked by deep-sea arthropods. Based on his observations, he tells her the sea will return soon, which is why the creatures have come ashore. Julia begs him to save her children, but she's unsure where to go because she has lost the map. In response, Nato fires a flare into the sky. Ben spots the flare's direction, and the family rushes toward it. Soon, they see a yellow submarine in the distance, but reaching it proves challenging due to the rough terrain of the former seabed. Cassie expresses her frustration at her mother's focus on saving the children, but Julia ignores her and pushes the family forward. The family is forced to pass through a canyon contaminated with toxic waste. At one point, they are caught in a rock slide, and Julia becomes separated from the children. She orders them to continue on, but when Cassie refuses to leave her, Julia pleads with her to save Ben. Cassie and Ben manage to make it out of the canyon and reach the submarine, but to their dismay, there's no one inside. Suddenly, Nato, badly wounded, emerges from behind the boat. He admits he has no chance of surviving and urges them to climb aboard. However, Cassie decides to go back for her mother, who is desperately fending off the crabs, her bullets nearly depleted. Cassie climbs over the rock barrier and extends her hand to Julia. Together, they manage to reach the submarine just as the crabs overrun Nato, who meets his fate in their claws. The family climbs aboard, and just then, an ocean wave crests over the horizon. The water lifts the submarine and drags it across the rocks. As Julia watches everything that has happened over the past few days flash before her eyes, she passes out. When she awakens, she finds the vessel at a standstill. Julia opens the hatch, and the family emerges to discover they are in a ruined city, carried there by the wave. Thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe so as to watch our latest uploads.